might not see any words on the screens. Oh, no. <laughs> Is everybody okay with that? Like, I really want to see Jesus, don't you? I want to see Jesus where we work. Of course, I'm in full-time music. Thank you, Jesus. Whatever you do, don't you want to see the Lord in everything you do? Unless the Lord really comes, it's, not, it's, it's a waste of time. We might as well go play pool or something. So, Lord, we want you here. And, Lord, invite us into your inner room, Lord, into that inner sanctuary. So let's just give him one minute of just, oh, let's give him every minute, but let's give him one minute of, Lord, what would you like us to do today in worship that will bless us all so that we can be changed? I love it when people say they get changed from a musical note or a vocal or, or a piece of art or writing and dancing. I love it. I love all that, those mediums with worship. So, Father, we come before you. Fill this place, Lord. Let us dwell in your presence in the inner sanctuary because we have the blood of Christ in us. So we can go to the inner sanctuary. Hallelujah for that.
Lord, I just pray healing on these folks right now. There's a lot of you out there with so much discouragement with your craft. It's so hurt. And you're afraid to move forward. Move the Lord, I believe the Lord is saying, move forward in your craft. 
and be blessed. It's not easy for, it's like even me up here right now, I had a song list that Lord keeps saying, don't play. So I'm looking at everybody's face going, ah. but you know what? I really like what Don Potter said today. I'll blame him. <laughs> you know, we have to step further into what the Lord is doing to really receive. There's a cost there. We have to change. And when we change what we normally do, it's not easy, especially if you're leading something that people aren't used to. But we need to move into areas of creativity in our lives, no matter what we do, that's going to step ahead of what's already there. So he's going to have you create stuff that hasn't been done before. I wasn't going to say anything. I was just going to play, but I have to go with whatever I get. So I really want to encourage you guys that it's in my heart. I see it. I've been in worship ministry and professional music for 20 years or over, and I've seen the changes too. And I'm just, I have such a heart for you guys because I've been through a lot of hurt and pain and rejection, even in my own family. I used to get, and it's all, I've been all been healed with it, but I remember part of my family uh, saying like, Mike, play a tune on the piano. Well, I wanted to do... That's what the Lord gave me, but they wanted me to do, you know, which is fine. But my call was way out there somewhere, whatever that is. So whatever the Lord has put on your heart, whether it's writing, art, music, preaching, whatever it is, you have to step into that area that's in your heart that he's called you to do and move forward in it. Because some of us up here really need help in it because... We need your help, you know? It's like, okay, go ahead, go for it, you know? I love it when somebody says, before you do a worship set, you're sitting there freaking out because, oh God, you want me to do that? And then they'll get somebody to say, yeah, yeah, go ahead, do it. It's easy for them to say, I guess, but, but it's, it's great support, so I want to bless the socks off you guys. And uh, we have to stop now, but that's okay. So uh, be blessed. And uh, the Lord has me yap a lot more in my worship. I don't know what it is, but I guess he wants me to talk a bit more. So bless you guys. And uh, look forward to the rest of this afternoon. God bless you. Amen. Thanks. Bless you. Michael, you amaze me. You're right, right to the moment. I was just starting to get into it. <laughs> That's good. Leave it a little bit. Hi. What a time. I don't know. You know, for those of you, how many of you, it is the first time. I wasn't here last night or this morning, so I didn't get a, an idea of how many of you, this is the first time that you've been to something here at TACF. Can I just see your hands? Yeah, well, it's about a third newies and two-thirds have been here before. But, you know, it's absolutely amazing. Um, for those of you who haven't been here, my name is Mary Audrey Raycroft, and I'm on um, pastoral team here. And... Uh, Love to be able to host some of the meetings at conferences, and so that's what I'm doing right now. It's, it's just welcoming you this afternoon as well. But what I was going to say, you know, that that worship, you're being led into something other. And we thought we had church all figured out, didn't we? And it's as if the Lord is saying, you know, I'm showing you how I want to express myself to you, and how I want you to respond to me, and. And so, you know, I came walking in today from the parking lot, and I just got back here in front of that tapestry, and I was just aware of the presence of the, the Spirit of God and of His love. And you're going to find that there's places you walk through here where there's like a thickness. It's the only way I can describe it. It's like His kabod, His presence. And you walk into that, and you think, wow, I don't think I want to leave this spot. It's absolutely amazing. 
So we have a wonderful afternoon ahead for you, and I'm not going to take any more time. You can get all sorts of information announcements maybe tonight. And I want to ask Barbara and Barry Simmons to come up for a few minutes. And they're going to, as they're coming, could I just make one particular announcement? I know that there's many of you that um, are artists, uh, creative artists with your paints and your, your chalk and uh, your pencils and whatever and watercolors and oils, and we want you to know that upstairs, up the stairs right in front of the, the balcony where you look over, there's a huge great big piece of plastic put out uh, there, and there's tables, and that's a place where you can just, you know, when that old creativity starts to rise up within you, you can just get up there and begin to express yourself, and all the time, you can see over, what, hmm? what, what, what? No oil, well there, Hey, whatever medium is. <laughs> um, so as you would paint up there, uh, you're welcome. And you can see over what's happening down here. You know, when the, the spirit sort of comes in, in vigor and you feel you want to express yourself, then that is a good place to do that. And so we'd ask you to only do it up there and not down here in the, in the sanctuary. Anyhow, I think Barbara and Barry are going to share some interesting uh, um, reactions and concepts with you and uh, I've known this too for like about 15 years when you were long. way too long when when he was out in the business world and Barbara was doing keyboard and she came to a, our, our Wednesday morning meetings and she began to grow and grow and grow and we watched this whole awesome thing of prophetic worship just begin to flow out of them and and now God's taken them into um, even being ones who record the giftings of others. And so they want to share with you some aspects of that for a couple of minutes, all right? Well, thank you. Um, we have a, a recording studio called the Jazz Kitchen. And uh, it's something that the Lord uh, did completely without our permission. <laughs> he just drew us into it. But I, I just want to say this morning that, um, that we're, we're not going to leave the same way we came. And what I've been seeing is the oil of the Spirit and the fire, uh, the fire coming together. And, and that's fine um, until you get into that environment and you're a kernel of corn. And all of a sudden, you stay there for a while and before long, pop! I just really believe that's what our studio is, our recording studio, and that same environment is here. Um, but our purpose is really to release captives out of creative prisons. That's what the Lord shows us. That's our purpose. And so, um, how many of you in here have been told that you're going to make a CD? Any? Put your hands up. Yo, whoa, whoa, whoa. All right. All right. That's God. And it may seem crazy. You might be thinking, well, who would I sell it to? Um, uh, you're thinking of the money. But you know what? That's not what God is looking at. He's looking at the process and he's saying it's time to publish and record. And um, our studio is like a greenhouse. And uh, you know when you're trying to grow, uh, grow a plant, you have a little seed, that little plant can't get put out into the cold, harsh weather, can it? No, it's, it's gotta be in a nice, warm, safe environment. And we could just as easily call our studio the greenhouse as the jazz kitchen. Because the Lord, over the last five years, has been sending us these wonderful creative people who have been in their basements writing songs and, and just singing them to the walls, not even to anybody else. I want to tell you two stories. Um, one about a young man named Bryden, 21-year-old guy. He's, he's training to be a police officer, in fact. And uh, he sees our website, calls us up and says, could I come in and meet with you guys? Uh, I, I want to record a couple of songs. So we said, come on down. He comes in. Typical 21-year-old university guy. He was extremely shy. We get in to talk to him, and he says, um, I'm really, really nervous, and I've never sung before anybody in my life. Not even my mom. So uh, he starts to play us these songs. And we can hardly understand the words, but what happens is we begin to see, kind of with the father's eyes, who this guy is. He's a mixture of, like, Leonard Cohen and Bob Dylan. Amazing, amazing gift. So uh, we chat with him, and he, and he said, like, why did you pick our studio? He goes, well, you guys look really safe. You just, just look safe. And so he said, well, that's really awesome. We're really glad to have you here, and, and we just want to encourage you. We're Christians, we said. And so what, before every session, we pray. Are you okay with that? He's like, I have an aunt who's a nun. <laughs> 
We said, well, that's cool. That's really good. So we went over and, you know, we said, so before every recording session, we're just going to come over and maybe we'll just put our hands on you. We're just going to pray and ask God, the, the one who gave you the gift, to bless you. So he's like, okay, cool. He stands there, you know. And we come over to him and the father's heart just begins to pour out on this young man. And it was just like, whoa. And I mean, it just get a major download. And he looks up like, what was that? Well, he went into the studio, no nerves, did an amazing recording. Uh, we worked with him actually for, th he did a demo of three songs. The next time he came to our studio to do his second recording, he came with a big honk and big cross. Like it must have been this big. He's like, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm with it. And uh, just to give you an update, uh, we were, uh, the, the, the man who couldn't sing in front of anybody has now been singing all over the place. He's going on tour this summer. He's on MySpace and he has Bob Dylan as a friend. <laughs> and you know, the exciting thing about this young man is that, that we just had to share um, the Father's love with him and pour it out on him. What he does with it is up to him. But we're there, we've, we've been to see him uh, at live shows and we just bless him and it's a continuing relationship. And there's another example too, uh, an older gentleman this fellow, when I say older, he's in his 50s, and I'm not trying to insult anybody because I'm older than 50, so that's okay. But this fellow, he's in his 50s, he's never played, he never sang music, he never took an instrument, he never took a music course. All of a sudden, one day, his wife bought him a guitar, and the Lord started pouring music on him. He's written so many songs now, we can't keep up with him in our studio. He comes in once or twice a week, and when we try and record one of his new songs, and he's, he's got songs that are this thick, you know, paper that that's thick, that is that thick. Now, again, when he first came to our studio, he couldn't, we asked him, well, sing one of your songs for us. He was so shy, his mouth wouldn't even open. When he would sing, he would go, like, you couldn't understand a word because he was so shy, because he'd never done this before. He'd never done this in front of anyone before, not even his wife. He never even sung for his wife. So now this fellow, he's been recording off and on with us for about three years, I guess, something like that. He's working on his fourth CD project. He's already completed three complete CDs. Um, they're all Christian music. The Lord keeps downloading songs on him and on him and on him. He has no idea what he's playing. If you ask him what chord is that or what key is that in, he can't tell you a thing. He has no clue what he's doing. The Lord is just showing him where to put his fingers and how to sing the songs and what the lyrics are. So now he's on his fourth CD, he's in his 50s, he never did this before in his life. He's singing and doing things all around the Hamilton area, uh, and, and he's, he's really loving what he's doing and people are loving him, and it's really blessing him and, and the people that he sings for. I guess the one thing we wanted to say just quickly, this is a ministry for us. We consider this a ministry. We're in the workplace, yes, but that's what we're supposed to be doing. All ministry doesn't occur here in the church. It can occur outside in the workplace. And, and we've been drawn and we've been asked to do that. Um, Mary Audrey mentioned that I used to be in the workforce in downtown Toronto and I wore a three-piece suit and I had no beard and I had hair and I wore a tie and, and uh, got six figures salary, but I don't do that anymore. And we were kind of concerned about that. We thought, well, how are we going to survive? You know, where's the money going to come from? And the Lord said, well, just obey me. And the money has come. The money is there. We, when I was working downtown and all, our, all the cash that we had at the time, yeah, but we were in debt. We didn't own a house. Uh, now we have no debt. We own a house. And we're doing just fine. Thank you very much. Praise God. So it's a ministry for us. We enjoy doing it. We don't charge the kind of rates that other people charge because what we want to do is bring people, like all you guys that raised your hand, about wanting to do a CD sometime. We're the people to come and talk to because we can help you with that. We can take that dream of yours and turn it into a reality. So that's the story. <laughs> to God be the glory. <laughs> Sounds good to me. I know that's the, the main challenge for most of us is, well, where on earth do I get started? Who will understand me? Especially when maybe sometimes those closest to you don't understand you. Well, what I wanted to do now is introduce to you your workshop leaders. And uh, if I could see them here, I'd really 
introduce them. So um, I know you're here, Balma. Come on up, and Christine. And James Tugan is here in the form of April Stevenson because he's busy setting up for you. One, two, three. Um, Michael. Where's Michael? He what? He's setting up as well, so I'll tell you about that. And Christine Potter, where are you? Christine Potter. Did she not know she was going to come? And uh, Here she comes. Okay, Gallop. <laughs> You ready for workshops? You ready to get stretched? Yeah. Um, I could sing if I could, but I won't. And I could do a little dance, but I won't. Or I could wave a flag. I just kind of like to have everybody all together. But maybe you two could start. You three could, you two. You three could start. And oh, um, uh, here she comes now, I think. Yeah. And. Uh, that's one, two, three, four, and five. Is, is, is Michael going to share, or am I supposed to speak for Michael? Okay. He needs time to set up all those instruments back in his room. All right. Well, when Christine gets here, then we'll have you all, <laughs> you all share what you're going to do. Maybe she's trying to figure out what she's going to do. I uh, got it. I just got a word of knowledge. I heard her last night, you see, and uh, it's amazing what the Holy Spirit's doing to us because lots of times he makes us wait until we're ready to open our mouth and then he tells us what we want to do. So I think she was formulating. So come on up on the stage and, and uh, you can formulate while you um, just stand there because uh, I think they met you this morning, didn't they? Yeah, sort of. Sort of. I've got another mic here. I just ask everybody that's doing a workshop to just take one minute give or take, a little bit more, and share what you think the Holy Spirit might be saying to you about what you might be doing this afternoon here in the auditorium. Christine Potter. Okay, hi, I'm Christine Potter. I think, but if you have something better for me to be, let me know. I'm very flexible. That's why I wasn't even here to introduce my workshop that I don't know that I'm going to have, but I sort of think I'm going to have it. Does that explain it? <laughs> Um, I'm not really sure what I'm going to be talking about. Um, I kind of go by the flow. Um, I'm an inspired teacher. I just figured that out. That gives me the room to not know what I'm going to talk about, so I can blame it on God. He didn't tell me. I did sort of prepare. I mean, I used to prepare, but why bother preparing? Because I don't get to be in control. So. Uh, anyway, I might talk about that kind of stuff. I might talk about prophetic intercession because I'm a prophetic intercessor. Uh, I like to talk right now, I'm talking about uh, what I call divine alignment, getting your spirit out of the basement and into the lead so you can connect up better with God. That's one of my favorite topics. I might get to talk about that. So those are a couple of choices that might happen. Sounds great. So let's just reach out our hand to her. Hands up. And, and she's at a super place for receiving. So I just thank you, Holy Spirit, that you know exactly what you want to say using Christine as, as, as you just dwell within her. And you've got the right message for the heart of the right people that decide to stay in this room and find out what you're all about. So we just honor you and we thank you for being here. And Holy Spirit, we really thank you for being here with her. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, who's next? Michael. Well, you met Michael, kind of, because he was leading that worship this afternoon. But what are you going to do, and where are you going to do it? I'm in the overflow room, too, which is back. That's down that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we're going to be talking about activating prophetic flow in worship. And worship, to me, is art, music, vocal, even writing. And I don't say that unequally. It's all equal. But any, anything that's creative... So we want to just activate that, and I want to pray. We want to pray for you too, and uh, minister to you a bit. Okay, so thank you. Well, let's reach out our hand to him. Wow, I thank you for your sounds. We're going to be hearing all sorts of sounds that come from your heart. Woo, come right from your throne room. These days that we're together. So I thank you for the sounds that you've been putting within him, and I thank you that you're going to enable him to articulate absolutely everything that you're whispering into his ear. And, and that people are coming into liberty and freedom with their worship and making music in their souls for you, Jesus. 
Thank you. So, Michael, thanks. And you go down just by the um, bookstore there to find him. Now, here comes the other part of Michael, and this is Christine. I just looked at this, and I said, woo. Did you, ever, did you look at that painting and go, woo? Sometimes there's only one word that describes what Christine does, and that's woo. That's absolutely beautiful. So just share what you're going to do. Yeah, and I look at what God does, and I go, wow, too, and whoa, and thank you. You're so faithful, God. And I'm doing a workshop on intimacy with God with the medium of paint. And it's going to be a hands-on workshop. I got the paper, the paint, the brushes, and everything there ready to go. And it's not about being an artist. It's about intimacy with God. And that's everybody, because you are his child, you have his DNA. And something I say to everybody, there isn't anything that goes on that piece of paper that your Abba Daddy in heaven isn't going to want to put on his fridge. <laughs> so everyone's welcome. It's a good opportunity for the artist to get out of the box and to follow what they're getting and not what they're seeing. And it's a great opportunity for those who never dreamed they'd ever pick up a paintbrush. And it passes the head, it heals the heart, and I welcome you. It's an invitation for you to have a special time with God. Wow, and Christine's going to be up the stairs. Oh, you want to show that? Okay, go up so they can see it. Oh, the, the camera's got to go on. I just wanted to lift this up as a visual of a painting I did. And this was painted for this conference for one of the prayer visuals saying, here I am. Is that not what we're doing here? Here I am, God. And he's faithful. So is he. He'll come. So Christine's going to be just up the stairs and then right in that room three, like almost right in front of it, you'll see the table set up up there. And so, Father, I thank you that there's going to be a real miracle happen. Uh, in every single person who comes to that workshop because they're going to find that you begin to pour forth through them with, with design, with thoughts, with pictures, with expression that they never ever thought that they could do. And I thank you for the anointing who dwells within Christine that there's something within her that's going to be able to, oh, pull it out of them. And they're going to rejoice like children. Yeah, painting with their fingers. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. All right. Belma. Belma Vardy. Whoa. I wish I'd be. I've, I've done workshops with Belma and we've traveled different places in the world together doing things together. And I just wish I knew how to be graceful. Mary I, think it's built, I think it's built into her. Mary yeah. Audrey. So for people who don't think they're graceful, they should come to your workshop. Mary Audrey. Belma. God looks at the heart. Oh, yes, and it's just clumping all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> Belma's going to be right behind here in this most awesome house of prayer. And what are you going to be doing back there? We are going to have an experience with God. Um, we are going to become, um, we're going to go through the veil. We're going to meet with him face to face. Um, what happens after that? That's between you and the Holy Spirit. And um, yeah, just, uh, it's not about dance. It's not about movement. If you're, if you're feeling clumsy, if you're feeling it's not for me, then maybe it is. Yeah, because God wants to set you free. And God wants you to leave feeling like a prince, like a princess, because all I see is Jesus standing there with his arms open, and he's not concerned about your movement. He's concerned about your heart. So it's about Amen. movement with the heart. And I just needed to add, because you see, she said, you'll come out feeling like a prince or a princess. And I thought, yeah, you guys, you men, you need to know this is for you. This isn't just a woman's thing. Amen. It's for you, yeah. learning to express yourself. And we've seen men do this. Oh, I know. Lots of men. Yeah, warrior men. Well, oh, I'm, I'm not praying. <laughs> <laughs> she thought we were going to get away without praying. Wow. Lord, I think that you, Lord, you're the original dancer almost. I can just see you dancing. And Lord, you jumping and leaping and praising God and you worshiping. And I thank you that 
the spirit, your Holy Spirit who dwells within each man and each woman that comes to this workshop. Father, I'm just asking that you would just rise up with a whole fresh new expression of adoration and worship and, and touching you. And I thank you, Lord, for your life in Belma and, and the great deposit that's in there. And as she pours out on the people in the house of prayer this afternoon, it's going to be a life and heart changing experience in Jesus' name. Wow, we See, it's not you dancing, it's Holy Spirit moving wow. through you. Yeah, and and April Stevenson, alias James Tugan. Well, I see James. Are you coming forward or did you want me to make the announcement? Here he comes. If how many of you were here last night when James shared? Oh, wasn't that fabulous? For those of you who were not, take a look to your right. All the art pieces that you see are a collection that tell of a journey. It's a very powerful, intimate journey of someone coming through deep pain and uh, in the process of how the, they meet the Lord and the Lord just speaks into their life. Well, James, uh, he's going to be giving a workshop, so he'll tell you about that. There he is. Thank you very much. Um, just a quick introduction. There's a, a course that was invented to go along with these drawings uh, and the prints. It's called the Dreaming of Lions Project, and uh, it's uh, normally a 12, 13 week long course, and I'm gonna be doing two of the, the sessions from it, one today and one on Saturday up there. The one today is called A Sacred Eye, and it has to do with how, how God thinks on different levels, and how per visual perception works on different levels and how he's designed us to be able to see the way he does because we're made in his image. So you get to put puzzles together, um, look at pictures, and we gotta look at God's portfolio on a screen. Amen, and you're gonna be upstairs in, in the middle room. So, Father, thank you for the choices that you're giving us to make. Oh, James, I'm sorry, it just you were here and then you poof, away you went. Father, right where he's standing, right there. Would you just do a download right now on that precious son of yours and all the abilities that you place within him to impart to those that are going to that workshop. Thank you. Gosh, he was here and then he, he wasn't. <laughs> so, why don't you put your hand on your heart? Right. Why don't you just say with me, Father in heaven, I'm your righteous child, and my steps are ordered by you. And I believe that you are going to lead me into the exact place that I will be this afternoon. And I ask that it would just cause my heart to be open, my understanding to be open, and that you do a stirring within me because I am a creative child of God. Thank you, in Jesus' name, amen. So, those of you, now you all know where you're going, I'm sure you do. Now you know what you also can do, if you're going to stay in the auditorium for Christine, put something on your seat, if it's a seat you want to save for tonight, and you're welcome to come up towards the front, okay, when it kind of empties out. You're welcome to come up to the front, only know that that's just for this afternoon session. And then um, you'll go back, you know, for tonight to where you've left stuff, all right? You left a belonging that says, this chair belongs to me. So bless you as you go. They're going to be uh, beginning um, quite soon and have a wonderful time. And you do not need to come back to the auditorium when you're finished your workshop, all right? Are you happy up here or would you want to be down there? Where are you most happy? Okay, do you want a music stand or no? You just leave your stuff here. Just lean. I, I like to lean on that. It's a, it's a safety thing for leaning. <laughs> yes. You can have both on. I'll turn one off and okay. it goes funny. So bad. Whichever yeah. one you like.
makes it so much easier um, when there's a smaller number in a room if you kind of consolidate. Makes it really much nicer for the person that's speaking when she knows she's got a group and she's not. I said to her, you want to play ping pong, you know, table tennis? So it makes it easier if you'd like to move over, save your seat, put something on it, and, uh, and come on in. Okay. So... Whenever you feel like it, it's all yours. We just never know how God wants to start. I guess any time that you do anything, you isn't, isn't starting one of the hardest things, only followed by finishing. <laughs> so I always find it kind of hard to start, but um, it's getting easier. I'm not, I'm not usually a public speaker. Um, I'm just kind of coming into that, so it's fun. Once I get going, it's kind of fun. It's a little unnerving because um, I'm dying to a lot of my old mindsets about what public speaking looks like or sounds like. Um, I am a person who loves, well, I used to love it. I don't love it as much now because I can't remember very well. But when I used to be able to remember better, I used to love to transfer data. And I thought that was what teaching was all about, was that you just get all this great information and you just pass on all that great information. But now I, get, I see all these great things, but due to the uh, continuing graying of the hair, I don't remember them. In fact, even when I'm talking about them, I seem to not remember them. <laughs> So, but I've been told, and I believe this is an, an awesome compliment, that I am a very good teacher for people with ADHD, is that what it's called? Yeah. Yeah, I had a girl come up to me and say, I'm so excited, I loved your uh, seminar so much. She said, I've never been able to follow anybody, but I followed you perfectly. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? So I guess that means there is a, a redemptive uh, purpose for uh, rabbit trails. Because you, uh, I like to blame as much as I can on God. You know, as a recovering Christian, you know you're not supposed to do blame shifting. But I've actually found two beautiful forms of blame shifting. One is I shift a lot of blame over to the Holy Spirit. And then since I got involved in um, generational curse prayer, that's awesome. It is not my fault, and even the devil didn't make me do it. It was my ancestors. <laughs> is that terrific? I mean, I love it so much. I just love it. I love to help other people have generational curse deliverance because it's so low impact. You don't really feel any shame because, I mean, like they were from like 500 years ago. So it feels like very unpersonal. However, you do recognize that some of the generational curses of your far distant ancestors were most recently seen in some of your aunts and uncles. <laughs> Terrifying. But anyway, so blame shifting has redemptive purposes. See, you thought I was going to forget myself, but I really didn't. <laughs> I'm kind of tricky that way <laughs> sometimes. Okay, listen. Good. Because we're about the flow, aren't we? 
aren't we? Because see, um, if we're prophetic intercessors, if we're creative people, if we're God's children, we are creative, okay? Because we are made in the image of a creative God. We're made, our spirit is of the same fabric and DNA of the creative God. So, I mean, we are creative. I just think that, what is misnomer, isn't that a good word? And I think creative is hooked up with misnomer. And I think we've got a lot of ideas that creativity is just limited to fine arts. It's really not, is it, at all? And I feel like, hold on, now see, we're just, do you feel like, I'm going to just be stopping and going, oh, did you feel that? Oh, did you feel that? Oh, did you feel that? Because we're tuning in to tuning in. And we have to practice being aware of being in tune, don't we? And we kind of learn how to go with the moves of the Spirit. That's how come we can know how to be in agreement with God, in agreement with each other. So we want to tune in and become sensitive to the flow and the movement. So sometimes I wait a minute because when we say things, if we're saying something that's connected to God, then it's doing something and it's moving stuff around. Uh, See, Eve, did you feel it? <laughs> we said move it around. Okay, for me personally, I felt it in the back of my neck. Isn't that funny? If you're a prophetic or an artistic person, you're, oftentimes you're picking up the sense of the flow in lots of different ways. Uh, I just used to think I was neurotic. <laughs> and I'm not saying I'm not. However... <laughs> I later found something to sh blame shift it onto. Oh, my God, I'm an intercessor. I'm not just neurotic. Hello. That's fantastic. And I have what I call, sometimes I have like, what do you call it? I call it uh, la, 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 uh, multifaceted disorder. It's really not DID. Hold on, there's a little shifting going on. It's, we're moving all around. Woo wow, woo Yeah, now, oh, woo hold on, we're moving. So what happens is, as the, uh, I call myself the facilitator. I'm the facilitator and I just get the microphone so I get to say what I think is going on. Now, as a facilitator who is also prophetic, who's an intercessor, who feels it in their body and experiences what everybody's experiencing, of course you would have multiple, multiple faceted disorder because I'm up here having to experience a lot of you. Wow. Even you guys don't want to experience you. <laughs> Sometimes. Isn't that true? I know. And then I have to experience you. That is very unkind. <laughs> Woo. I used to take myself very seriously. What a waste of time. I could have had a lot more fun sooner. But I didn't know that. <laughs> but I'm catching up, believe me. Okay. So, I facilitate, I, t I kind of feel and moderate our experience. Hanny and Elizabeth and their team have made the experience. Wow. Whoa, feel that? Okay, wow. Ooh, shoo. Wow. Wow. Mmm. Wow. Good. Wow. Woo. We're all having an opportunity to experience and to understand and actually be in and perceive <laughs> the experience we're having. I know, isn't that cute? Um, I was always having the hurry up message. I don't know if many of you have spent your life hurrying up. I had this like, oh, I have to hurry up and catch up because for some reason I'm behind. What I'm behind on, I'm not sure. I like maybe everything. And so like I'm hurrying along, like pushing, 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 pushing. And the Holy Spirit said, where are you going? <laughs> I said like, I don't know, I have to catch up. He said, no, you know, did you realize that if you keep on hurrying up, you will have rocketed through a life that you never got a chance to have? 
Now, tell me, is that pitiful or what? He's like, hey, I, give you a, I gave you a life. I actually came to give you what? Life and life more abundantly. I never intended for you to miss it. Yeah, ouch. Okay. Okay, now when we have, I call them silas, when we have a little sila, also like this, we come to a pause. As we go in the flow, we come to a pause. When we have a pause, we're always wondering what the spirit wants to do when we come to a pause. Okay? So sometimes he wants to do something specific, sometimes not, sometimes, but it's, we kind of honor. Ooh, wow, it's there, woo. Okay, we honor the pauses. Sometimes we're honoring the pauses of other people's process in the gathering. You see, how could I possibly know what to say until you were here? <laughs> Why should God give me a message for someone that's gonna be here? not here unless I was having a message for somebody that wasn't here? And sometimes I suppose you do get messages for people that aren't here. I mean, my husband talks about occasionally he'll get, he gets songs for people that aren't here. And he's releasing a sound for a people who are hearing it and receiving it in their spirit somewhere else. But oftentimes I don't have to get the message or the purpose until it's the time. Okay, there you go. All right, woohoo! All right, we're having. Okay, feel that little feeling. Woohoo! It's called dimensional shifting. Okay, we're having a dimensional shift. Feel it in your head, anybody besides me? Interesting, isn't it? Okay, woohoo! All right, woohoo! We're encountering a release from a, a thinking system, aren't we? Woo! The thinking system is that I have to know the future, right? Wow, ooh, good, ooh, that's a bad one. Mm. Okay, I don't have to know the future. I only have to be in the present, right? That's what we're learning. We're learning how to be present. We're learning to, how, to have the life we're having. <laughs> Sometimes we don't want to have it. I understand that. But by having that life that we're having is how we actually enter change, right? So only by living what I've, is before me do I, am I actually participating, this is a little bit cosmic, but am I actually participating in the, actually we could call it renewal of our minds, the metamorphosis or the transformation, okay? Now that's obviously pure revelation, isn't it? <laughs> it's coming right out of the spirit realm, out of, through my spirit and I'm releasing it, okay? Never thought of it before, never said it before. Okay, that was straight from God to us. And it also gave me a headache. Not a bad headache, just a minor headache. Okay, those minor headaches are when there is a coming together and sort of like a clashing of mindsets and belief systems, okay? And you'll feel it sometimes in your, like when you're in a situation like we are where we're opening up and being sensitive to flow, when we're being sensitive to the flow um, and tuned in, we will sense, um, we'll sense the collision of mindsets. We'll, we'll sense much more than we have brought into the comprehension realm. Does that sound, do you make, does that making sense to you guys? Good. Um, I, I try to make sense, but um, since I'm not really in charge, and I don't usually know really what sense is either, so. <laughs> Ooh, good. I'll tell you what's happening too. Um, we're also still in the uh, process of not taking ourselves too seriously. La 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 la. Yeah. Um, sometimes I act. Y'all are cute. You need to. That, that good. I like to see the teeth. That's good. I like to see them little smiley teeth. Good. Very nice. Very nice. That feels no pressure, but that does make me feel good about myself when I see smiley teeth. Especially with younger people. Older people, you know, you never know if they're their real teeth. <laughs> and if they smile too much, you know, they might come down. But with young people, they usually are their own teeth. And if they show you their teeth, that is a good sign with young people, I believe. Anyway, uh, oh, yes. Um, 
we're, we're, we're still uh, moving at it, we're changing mindsets. And you know, I am at all times, not consciously and intentionally, I am losing my reputation. Yeah, I'm, 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 I always think I don't really care until I hit one of those places and go, oh my God, I still care. I mean, I still care that I was the person at the party with the lampshade on my head. I still care. <laughs> Dang, I guess I'm not there. Um, you know, we are God's fools. Isn't that fun? Unless we're taking ourselves too seriously, however. And then, of course, we wouldn't want to be foolish, no matter how foolish we really were anyway. But we wouldn't want to know we were fools, now would we? But anyway, one of the things he was telling me was he was making this, like, little differentiation between God's fool and making a fool of yourself. <laughs> Isn't that cute? Yeah, one of the times I was, like, sort of helping him out. He said, don't do that. He said, you don't need to make a fool of yourself. He said, I can do that very well myself. I can make a fool of you easily. So don't bother, tr don't bother pushing the parameters. You know, you don't need to go beyond me because you're foolish enough when you're in me. <laughs> Isn't that hilarious? <laughs> so therefore, when we do this sort of unconditional, I'll do whatever, go whatever, obedience thing with God, we may appear foolish. However, what are we going to do about it? Nothing. Just don't bother making a fool of yourself. Why bother? Yeah, sometimes I have to actually show my teeth in public like this, like growling and snarling. I'm not having to do that today, and I'm very grateful. I just praise the Lord that I don't have to be, like, under that kind of intercession. Because occasionally I do get the spirit of intercession that is, like, like the lion, and you're kind of running around, and you're kind of, like, showing your teeth and growling. It's, like, so socially unacceptable a lot of places that I go. Now, I could tell that it doesn't really bother you people, and that's precisely why I don't have to do it. Praise the Lord. Thank you all very much. Because if you were more conservative and that that would be found to be totally obnoxious by you, I would have to be doing it. So I just appreciate how open-minded you all are. And oh, it's so terrific. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That's, see, there you go. She's got it. That's another thing. You know, when you're a really uh, act out stuff and you're very strange and peculiar, but did you ever notice how you always have, well, maybe y'all aren't this way, but I would look at somebody, not like her necessarily, but I'd go over there and go, oh, what is that girl doing? <laughs> and um, because, you know, it's kind of like the pot calling the kettle black. Do you still remember that, you know, thing? That's an old saying. And it's kind of like, isn't it funny that, like, we have our own little form of weirdness, but, but ever somebody else's form of weirdness annoys us? <laughs> Aren't we silly? Yeah, but one time, like, I had a friend, and she was kind of, like, manifesting all this stuff, and I was so glad it wasn't me. And then the Lord said to me, yeah, but, you know, she happened to be a, a singer, a really great singer, and, but she was manifesting all this intercession because she's also an intercessor, and uh, she was manifesting real bad, and I was like, ooh, so glad I'm not working today. It's my day off. And, um, and the Holy Spirit said, yeah, but do you know, if you were willing to carry the intercession, then she could do the singing. <laughs> yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> so he was saying, if you were willing to take, to bear that burden, then she could be released to go on and do something else that's that needs to be done, but without someone who's willing to bear that burden, she's got to carry that too. Isn't that profound? So the Lord's always looking for us to be willing to bear His expressions whatever way they look. Okay, how's everybody doing? Still got any stuff on the back of your necks? A little bit, huh? Yeah. I think, you know, we're breaking through into something new, aren't we? And breaking through is breaking through. And one of the things that we have to break through is a lot of our, our, own, our mindsets, you know. And uh, then, of course, we have principalities, <laughs> which are like giant mindsets, aren't they? One of the reasons that I wait is also because y'all make up the message, right? I said that earlier. 
that uh, what who you are uh, comprises the the message and the direction of the Lord. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that fascinating that God cares so much about us that He will weave together a message or um, you know, a prayer ministry or anything, he would weave it together to be able to make it specifically something for us, to include us. Isn't that beautiful? And, uh, and there are certain times when I reach a certain place in the, in the presence, and uh, it's to me, when we, we're not quite there yet, but when we reach a certain place uh, of agreement in the spirit and where we've opened our spirits enough, if it, everybody's spirit is, is so open to God and, and corporate that um, it makes me feel like it's kind of like a, a giant hot tub or something. Because when somebody moves in the tub, we, we feel the movement in our spirits, don't we? And when someone gets up and leaves, you feel that too. You feel the leaving. Isn't that profound? I mean, that's such a beautiful picture to me on how uh, the corporateness that God has made us to be. We are so not alone. And we are so meant to, to be a part of something larger than, than ourselves. Isn't that great? And so when, the, when we're really in a, um, an engaged place, um, you can literally feel the people get up and go in and out of the meeting. And, um, and it's, it, I'll feel it like waves when people move around and leave and stuff because everybody has so entered in to the gathering and to being a part of it. It's, it becomes so, so beautiful. And um, I, he just wants us to know. Uh, you see, now, just as I'm talking about that, you feel it deepening? that his presence is going deeper and deeper and opening up within our spirits. Isn't that beautiful? He loves us so much. And he really wants to um, in increase our spirit-to-spirit -spirit connection with him. Hence, again, the experience. He wants us to experience him and to know how to be with him and how to do all things with him. I read a book one time that mentioned... Um, that Jesus discipled with the principle of withness. Isn't that beautiful? He brought his disciples to be with him. And as we, he's left the Holy Spirit with us, we have two things then. We have the Holy Spirit with us, and we have the Holy Spirit in us. So we actually get to experience God within us us in our spirits. Isn't that awesome? Good. Yes. How lovely is that? <sighs> um, I think I want to talk to you about this little thing I'm interested in right now. I've been learning, I've uh, been reading and experiencing some materials from a guy named Arthur Burke. You guys know Arthur Burke? Oh my gosh! Yes! Don't you just love this stuff? Now the Arthur Burke stuff, because there's an Arthur Burt with a T. He's like a hundred and he lives in Wales. This is another guy. But both, both are quirky. Both are quirky now. I would tell Arthur that he's quirky if he was here, but I'm glad he's not here to hear it. Um, he's very, very brilliant, this Arthur Burke guy, and um, God's really, I think, using him in this season. Now, one of the things that he teaches into is uh, what he calls uh, spiritual alignment. And it's kind of like spiritual chiropractic in a way. It's that God has an ordained order of things, and he always meant for uh, us to be spirit, soul, and body, not body, soul, and spirit. Because the Holy Spirit wants to connect up with us face to face, so to speak, and he's going to have to do that by interfacing. And he does that by interfacing the same kind of DNA. So we have our spirit is, of the, is the spiritual DNA of the Holy Spirit, spirit to spirit. Our soul is not. Our soul is of the created order. 
So it's just not going to interface very well with the, with the Holy Spirit. And that doesn't mean the Holy Spirit's not big enough and strong enough and powerful. Obviously, he, he was part of the creating of our souls. But as far as daily function, it's going to work much better if you use it according to divine design. Isn't that great? Well, the only bad part is that most of us have been operating with our souls, the power of our souls, and I don't know where our spirit is. Depends on the person. Now, our spirit might be kind of in behind our soul, or it might be under our flesh, depending on what's up with us. Hmm. But we don't have time to go there, do we? So... Um, the whole, Lord showed me the picture of like a funnel. You have funnel has a big part and a little part. And he said, as long as you've got, you're trying to live your life <clears throat> by the power of your soul, you got the little part of the funnel up and you're trying to put a limitless God into a little teeny tiny funnel opening. He said, why don't you reverse the order to divine, uh, intent, put the part that was meant to, uh, to, to interface, and it's got all of the stuff. I'm not very technical, but, you know, it's got all the little hookups, and then it can kind of hook up with your spirit in such a way as to fill your spirit and empower your spirit, and then your spirit will release the life of God into your soul and body. And it'll be able to do all the things that we're supposed to be able to do, which we can't seem to do. Now, I don't know if you've ever been... Have you ever been frustrated as a Christian? Like, you try really, really hard to do the stuff, but you can't seem to do the stuff no matter how hard you try. Well, the Holy Spirit was talking to me, and he said, well, you know, yeah, it's kind of bad, but that's all that can happen if you're trying to live a spiritual life out of the power of your soul. <sighs> what about that? All you can do, he said, if you're really successful, if you're, he said, if you're really successful and you work really hard, you can become a Pharisee. Wow. Isn't that great? And he said, if you just are a person who can't keep it together and isn't that good at striving and producing, you can become a backslider. <laughs> isn't that painful? Think about how many Christians are flopping back and forth between them. And maybe you, we don't go into to absolute backsliding but a lot, we see a lot of people, including ourselves, that get so worn out and so burned out, you just quit for a while. That's what Don talked about, the slothful thing. That you just get, you have to quit. You have got no ability to keep on pushing yourself in your spiritual walk with the power of your flesh. And what does it say? It will kill you, won't it? And it does. It will burn us up or burn us out. And it's all because we didn't have it in divine order. The Lord always meant us to connect with him spirit to spirit. Because our, he said to me one time, I was trying to figure out something of the spirit. And, he, and it was, I thought, you know that really feeling you get when you're trying to intellectually understand a spiritual thing. And he said, you will never be able to uh, understand that. He said, you will burn up your poor pitiful little brain. He said it was not designed to understand spirit that way. Now, what can happen is my spirit interfaces and gets the downloads from the Holy Spirit, and it has what it takes to translate it into a form that my intellect can comprehend and receive without going into religiosity. You feel that moving on that? Okay. Woo, whoa. Okay, so if we try to take spiritual truth and capture it with our intellect, what will we be? Religious. Okay, woo. But if we will receive the Spirit by the Spirit, then the Spirit can work in such a way as to almost intuitively cause our soul to receive and perceive it, and that's called knowing. Ooh, good. Isn't that beautiful? Okay, there's the knowing realm. Do you feel it? Wants to open up. You're not quite, yeah, there you're getting it. Good. Okay, that's how we know. Not here. Here. Okay. And my spirit has the ability to bring my soul 
into knowing God. Good, 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 very good. And knowing others. How? By the Spirit. Good. Good. Yeah, that's hurting our heads just a little bit. I understand. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's all right. We have so exercised our intellect in regard to our spirituality, haven't we? I mean, it's huge. Yeah. Yeah. That's why the Lord talks a lot about becoming childlike. Because children mostly are not, they don't think they're smart enough to get it, so they just get it. <laughs> and it's hard, too, if, because your intellect is very pharisaical, and it will want to, it'll want to dr kind of drill your poor spirit and make your spirit, you know, it'll kind of persecute your spirit. You want to explain that, prove that. And unfortunately, that's when we have to do what? We have to move in and live by faith and tell it kindly, shut up. Ooh, feel that? Okay, David had to do it all the time, so it's in the Bible. He's saying, hey, soul, what's up with you? Chill. Okay, all right, so we got spirit rather than soul in the lead, spirit, soul, and body. Now, one of the things that this Arthur Burke guy talks about that's really cool is that our bodies... Uh, our spirit can actually uh, heal our bodies. And I've been thinking, he, he talks about the fact that you, your, your spirit has everything it needs uh, for life and godliness already encoded in it, right? So you don't have to go outside of yourself to find yourself or to find God, actually. Because the Lord, when you invite him, comes and lives what? Inside of you, inside your spirit. And the Holy Spirit will open up the, uh, the information, the truth, the ability to live and to walk in the godliness. And it's already in you. It's data that's been turned into light. Our spirit's filled with light. And then as we invite the Holy Spirit, he will open it up, turn it into the data that we need, and our, our spirit will release and nurture and train and equip our soul. Now, there are some teachings that we've been exposed to as Christians that make us feel that our souls are evil. Have you ever heard anything like that? Like kill the soul, kill the soul, kill the flesh, kill the soul. And um, our souls are magnificent. I mean, that's the seat of our personality. It's, it's, our souls are magnificent and wonderful. They just are not supposed to be in charge of leading and running your life. Um, but our, when they're under the dominion of our spirit, then our spirit can kind of oversee them. And so to speak, in counseling terms, we might call it reparent them. Okay? Good. Woo, feel that? Okay, woo, good. And our spirit can bring in the teaching and the training and the equipping that we need. Good. Now, we've traditionally felt we could only get that from church leaders. but we can actually get it from God, remember? In the Bible, Jesus going away, he said, I'm leaving you a comforter, but his name is not Peter. <laughs> Sorry, all you Peterites. It wasn't Peter. It was the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth, right? Now I've got this philosophy of my own. I'm actually starting... Thinking, I haven't really had time to do it, but thinking about starting a sect or a cult, but I don't have time, based around all of my uh, things I think up and make up in my imagination. Now, the imagination's not evil, but I don't know that it always creates proper doctrine. However, I do share these out of my first opinions, and if you're really tracking with me, you will know that I have forgotten where I'm going. <laughs> it was one of my first opinions, and... It might come back. <laughs> but help, help. Oh, yeah, spirit healing the body. Oh, yeah, and Peter wasn't it. Oh, I know. Thank you. Y'all are so helpful. Okay, yeah. I feel like we're in the state we are because we kicked the Holy Spirit out. What do you think? 
And this is my personal thing, but I think, of course, it's right because I think I'm right. Uh, yeah, we have wanted what? The manifestations of the Holy Spirit, perhaps, if we've gotten that far along. But we've, not, we've all thought, mostly, that we had to do the work of the Holy Spirit, which, which is that we had to do what? Mostly our own sanctifying. Do you ever feel like you have to sanctify yourself, straighten yourself out? Do you ever feel like you have to change yourself to make yourself uh, suitable or acceptable to God? Yeah, okay, not true. I've spent a lot, 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 lot of my time as a Christian believing that lie. But the scripture says that the Holy Spirit is the sanctifier. And he'll bring us into truth. He'll what? Convict us where we need convicting. But he just doesn't leave us off there. He empowers us to change. Wow. The Holy Spirit is the, uh, em let's call it the empowering agent of the blood of the cross. Wow. It, wow. Isn't that powerful? He is the activator. He is the living, quickening essence within the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. How awesome is that? And he lives within us, and he's therefore able to cleanse us from our sin, but do what? Take the power out of sin. What about it? And I think we've, because we've believed we needed to sanctify ourselves, we've therefore believed that we needed to defeat the power of sin in our own lives, didn't we? And it doesn't work. <laughs> Hence, we're like tired. But no, see, this was the whole big plot of the, I don't know, some sort of agency of wickedness that caught the Holy Spirit out of the church and made us forget who he is and what he does. But now we are waking up to it so we can receive the Holy Spirit in all of his fullness so he can do for us what we could never do for ourselves. Hence, we can be living the victorious and overcoming life of the new creations that we are in Christ. Isn't that awesome? That's the good news. And I believe that's, ooh, do you feel that? That's the gospel of the harvest. It's, it's the power of the spirit of the living God coming back and doing what only he can do. Well, anyway, hook up. I want to hook my spirit up to that Holy Spirit who will do all that stuff I just described. Isn't that awesome? Good. Oh, man, we're not there yet, but stuff is breaking off. What's breaking off in its heart? I feel it like this kind of yoke around the back of my neck. And you know what that is? It's a lot. It's, it's a yoke and it's works righteousness. You know what I mean? And we, the Lord is wanting to free us from works righteousness. Okay? So we're just going to keep on going. Woohoo! But as we go, the Spirit of God is releasing us. from the belief systems that have kept us from being free to be who we really are. Isn't that great? Good. Now, I like to keep pausing because we're always moving like this. And we're always wanting to see which way the Spirit wants to go. We're wanting to always be sensitive to Him because, you know, just because He seems to be going this way, sometimes we think we know where He's going and then we start to go that way. But He's teaching us ever-increasing sensitivity to Him because, there's, uh, because of the ever-increasing power that's coming upon us. So we want to be, it's not a fearful sensitivity, but it is a submissive sensitivity. And that's how we stay in agreement, a deepening agreement with what the Spirit of God is doing. Okay. Ooh, do you feel that? He loves that kind of talk. 
All righty. As we continue to submit ourselves and su submit deeper, see, every time I choose to honor him, even in what I call small obediences, little things. Now, that, see, the counterfeit of that is legalism, isn't it? That's the counterfeit, is that, oh, my God, I have to make sure that every single thing I do is right. And I know because I've got to be so right. I've got to be so right because why? Fear of punishment. And, it, and this is the true reality is that I don't want to be right, don't need to be right, do it right. No, that's perfectionism. But what's happening is I want to do it perfectly. Now, perfectly is maturity, okay? When you learn to do any action, any creative action, art, dance, whatever, you're going to start with sort of big, sort of blockish obediences. And then, but as you get the feel of it, you move into an entire realm of sensitivity and it becomes so different. And are you concerned with it being accurate? Of course not. But what you have is you've encountered partnering with the feel. You've entered into agreement or union with the Spirit of God, and you become one with Him. And so that's, what, that's the place that Jesus was with the Father. He, he intuitively saw and knew what the Father was up to, and he so moved, is one with the Father. Now, that's what you do with, that's where prophetic movement is. When I do it, prophetic intercession and stuff like that, I'm no long, I don't get a picture or something like this. No, I've so, so totally surrendered myself. And when I am in that place, it's um, no longer me, but it's Christ in me, and it's Christ in me living me. Isn't that awesome? So it's not like an, an obedience that I hear and obey, but I've come into a place where I say, hey, take me, take me, take me, and he does. And so then I just get to, I just get to move as one with him. And so then we can move into that in any art form, you know, we learn the structures, but then we always learn to let go and go into that place that's beyond talent. <laughs> it's beyond talent, and that's for everything we do. That's for our walk with Christ, our obedience, is where we keep submitting and submitting and submitting and surrendering and surrendering. Why? So I lose my identity? So it becomes some sort of religious zombie? No, not at all. It's so that I actually come into the place of fulfillment, where I actually get to be one with God, one through Christ, through the Spirit. But uh, it's, he always gives me the choice. But I, what I've learned is he does, when he gives me a choice to obey, he's not taking my life from me in the negative, but he's saying, I will give you what it takes to be perfect. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? To be what the deepest longing of your heart is, I will be that in you, with you, so that you can be what your heart longs for. Isn't that wonderful? So obedience is never to take away from my best, but it's to bring me to a place that I could never go on my own without him. Isn't that wonderful? And then as we move deeper and deeper and deeper into that life of union with Christ, what happens is that's where the super meets the natural. And that's where we become the supernatural sons of God. It's, and this to me is different than just work, you know, doing a miracle, praying and doing a miracle. This is where you walk in a continual oneness with God. And Hanny's got some wonderful um, ideas and communication about this. That's a lot like the, what people call the desert fathers, the, guy, the old guys 
who first knew God in the early, time, early church days that lived a committed and a sanctified life until the, the supernatural life was everyday life. And they walked in a realm of the spirit that was, I don't know if you talk, hear real spiritual people talk, they talk about Enoch, you know, you ever hear about the people that talk about Enoch and how he walked so closely with God that he disappeared <laughs> into God. You know, he, there, he didn't die. He just walked deeper and deeper and deeper in the supernatural realm until they entered into God and they were no longer in this realm. Isn't that neat? That's ours if we want it. And so when we're just practicing our obedience, it's kind of like, you know, like doing a dance with something. We're just learning to dance with God so that we, you know, the best dancers are like the best horseback riders. The communication is imperceptible. You don't see they're so one and it's so smooth that every action is as if the, it was invisibly communicated. Okay. That's the, they know each other so well. <laughs> Yeah, so he, we, that's where we give away the right to an independent life. See, in the Garden of Eden, what happened? Yeah, there was some fruit eating and some bad choices. But ultimately, it was independence from God. It was the invitation of the enemy was that you can live and be satisfied separate from your God. And what do we all war with? We all war with will I try to, will I live independently of the Lord? Will I try to get my own needs met? Will I do blah, 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 blah. And the Lord gives you, the, yeah, you want to live separate from me? Yeah, sure, go ahead. But you will miss. <laughs> yeah, you'll miss. Yeah, you'll miss. <laughs> you'll miss what Calvary was about. Calvary wasn't just to buy us out of hell. Calvary was to bring us back where we could be joined to God and have the fullness of life. You know, we were made before the foundation of the earth. Each one of us was formed in uh, who know, do you I don't have a clue what God made me to be but I and I know only the Lord can activate and empower the fullness of what he made me to be in this dimension of time I'm coming to believe that none of us will be all that we are made to be in this dimension of time. But we'll get to be part of it here, and then we'll go on in, full, in the fullness of eternity. Oh, we're doing a lot of work. Do you feel it? Do you feel how it's everything, there's a, been a quite a change in, this, in the atmosphere of the spirit? It's, it's just interesting. I wanted just to bring you back to perceiving it. So as, mm, as I listen to and share the Spirit, and as you receive what the Spirit's saying through me, we're entering into agreement, okay? You feel the, the unction on that, okay? Ooh, and see, that agreement is what changes things. Good. Are we intellectually lined up? Not really. Who can comprehend it? But our spirits have recognized the essence of the spirit, and we are sensing him, and we are going, yeah, I'm giving myself into that. Yeah, I'm giving myself into that push. I feel it. I don't comprehend it, but yeah, I know, yes. I'm giving my yes to it and my amen. Whoo, whoa. Yeah, shh. Wow. Wow. 
Woo, yes, woo, okay, wow. See that shifting and shifting? So I just think I'd like to do this for a minute. Um, so, uh, is anybody out there afraid of new spiritual experiences besides me? A few of you? Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'd like to, you know, because I always say like, oh, Lord, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I go, oh, my God, no, I'm terrified. Like, what if an angel really did show up in my room? Like, what if it was a demon with a, with a really nice costume? <laughs> Like, they're real tricksy. Ooh, feel that? Yeah. We're still scared of the dark a little bit, aren't we? That's okay. Yeah, we're scared of the unknown. Ooh, that's okay. Yeah. That's all right. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Hold on. Just let that process. Yeah. Yeah, you know, one of my fears is being deceived. Is anyone afraid of being deceived besides me? Yeah. That makes it hard sometimes, you know, because then what do we do? It's kind of like, you know, it's like clamping your intellectual butt cheeks together. <laughs> Going, I'm free, I'm free. Well, I'm tightly free. <laughs> I mean, if it'll give you tone back there, that's great, but I, I don't actually think so. <laughs> I, just, I think it's part of having a stiff neck, you know, it's those, it goes all the way from those butt cheeks all the way up and keeps a hold of your neck up here. Good golly. Oh, but anyway, thanks for the anatomy, spiritual anatomy class. Yes. Oh, yeah, but see, that's what happens when you think, woo, woo. It's getting a little bit woo, scary. Woo, woo. God, woo, woo, woo. That's not a happy woo. That's a terrified woo. Oh, gosh. Hold on. I just have to give myself a cosmic break here. Woo. <laughs> Relatively terrified over new experiences? Me, hello. Yeah, fear of being deceived? Yes, amen, me too. Yeah, well then, that makes it kind of complicated when you want to do new things with God, doesn't it? Because, well, the religious Pharisee on our little shoulder is going, well, how do you know that's really God? What if it's not God? I mean, what if it's not God? <sighs> and you're like, <gasps> panic attack. <gasps> what if it's not God? <gasps> what if it's not God? <gasps> hey, I thought the fruit of the spirit was peace. <laughs> Wrong spirit. Hello. So we want to do deep relaxation all the way down. <laughs> I know it's scary. I feel it. I know you're scared. I know you're scared. I'm scared too sometimes. <laughs> but what should we do about it? Let's think. Let's put on our little thinking anointing. <laughs> okay. When all else fails, give it to God. So, how many besides me are willing to give their fears to God? Okay. Okay, let's think of a prayer then. We'll make up a prayer. Father, uh, you can say it with me. Father, uh, we're tired of being scared. We don't want to worry about being deceived. Ooh, we hate the pressure and bad things it does to our bodies. Mm -hmm. We want to have our full spectrum of joy back. Yeah, so we give all our fears to you. We give anxiety to you. We give religious rules and regulations to you. And we give the fear of punishment 
to you. We give, uh, hold on, I have to think again. Uh, okay, on our way to being there. Let's forgive some people. How about it? Um, how about, and I'm going to, before I invite you to agree with me, because see, you should never give your agreement lightly, okay? Your agreement is very precious. You don't have to agree to something that you don't agree to. So, don't agree if you're not ready to agree, okay? Good. Ooh, that's painful. Hurts right here. We could do work there. Oh, we have to think about our surgeries. Um... Okay, let's do surgery number one first. Surgery number one is to forgive somebody. And, oh yeah, okay. Uh, let's, I think we should forgive the people who put a lot of rules and regulations on us and uh, punished us rather than disciplined us and shamed or humiliated us. How's that? Sound good? Sounds like my entire childhood. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, okay, so anybody wants to agree with me, you may. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to forgive everyone who put rules and regulations on me that were not for my certain good. Good. Uh, I forgive them all for shaming and humiliating me. and anyone who punished rather than disciplined me. Good, so I now release my fears of, sh of being shamed, fears of being humiliated, and fears of being punished if I make a mistake. I give those to you. And I take back my joy, my childlike joy, uh, freedom, and let me see, transparency, and creativity. Good. Amen. Okie dokie. How was that? Felt good, didn't it? You guys like that? Oh, good. Do you feel like some of that head stuff went away, didn't it? Did you notice that? That's good. You guys doing okay? Like, you, you want to keep, we got to keep going. Is that okay with you guys? You're right. Okay. You can feel free to leave the tub if you have to, you know. Okay. Now, did you notice we felt like a little sort of pain, a little pain here when we talked about our agreement? Okay. You feel it now? Pain, I said that. Okay. What's happened is, oh, very painful. Uh, for a lot of us, we have felt that um, we needed to agree with things that we didn't agree with. Now, when we did that, some of us actually compromised our, ourselves, didn't we? Anytime that you agree with something that you don't feel is right or right for you, it might be right for somebody else, but not right for you, but when you agree, get into agreement with it, saying it's right when it, you know it, you don't believe it is, we enter into personal compromise, and we've compromised our own spirits or consciences. Does that make sense? Okay, do you feel pain and pressure as we're talking about it, some of you? Yeah. And that's, that's grief. Now, for some of us, we were made to believe that if we did not agree with these things, that we would not be pleasing to God. Is that correct? Now, some of us have, um, you know, it's really, really hard when we feel that uh, we would be disappointing to God. And that'll, it, when that's held over our heads, some, not really necessarily intentionally, because a lot of times people have done these things to us because of faulty belief systems that they were under. So it wasn't intentional, but nonetheless, th they still put us into, un under the bondages, right? So we need to undo that because in our journey of the flow, the Lord has, he brought us to this area and we can resolve it. Okay. Whew. So now I kind of wait for a sense of how we want to pray into it. Okay. So 
Now what we're, we're doing, as you can tell, I call these things, the whole thing we're doing, for lack of a better term, I always call them intercessions. Because we are, it's actually the spirit of intercession. And as we are doing these actions for ourselves, we're also doing these actions with, for the body of Christ here and in general. Because we're here, aren't we? Good. And, ooh, you feel that? Okay, ooh, wow. Hmm. Good. Now that's just released and to another realm of, of understanding. Good. All right, so now we're going to pray. Um, let's see how to do it, Lord. Um, hmm. Okay, see, right here is where it has left us with a fear of deception. Because what happened when I gave up my agreement into something that I didn't agree with, I lost uh, a, my inner equilibrium with a sense of truth. Okay? Now I'm afraid inside that I'm not sure what's true. Does that make sense? And so... Therefore, we're, it causes what? It causes us to go into a tightening up and, an, a, and a, a fear, which is like a way to, con, a, a form of control, okay? And I try to control my sense of security by this tightening up, okay? Woo! It's quite attractive posture. <laughs> the claw. Anyway, oh gosh, sorry. This is exhausting. Anybody tired besides me? All right, it's tiring. That's why nobody wants to do this kind of work. <laughs> it wears out, but it's beautifully worth it. Okay, good. Uh, and it's, we have to have a la little bit of a laugh of it because why? Because this is actually excruciatingly painful. Okay, so. It's always good to have a little laughing gas periodically when you're doing surgery. I usually like to, remem I like to remember to administer it before the surgery. Occasionally, in my forgetfulness, I will do the surgery. And then with a look of fear and pain, I quickly have to give some laughing gas after the fact. So we had to have just a little gas first. <laughs> and we can't go down that trail. <laughs> Actually, can we? So, good. Good. We have our intercessor. She says, go. <laughs> she wants us to hurry up and get on with it because she's an agony. No. <laughs> Will you birth this thing <laughs> and stop talking about it? <laughs> All righty then. Ah! Oops. I don't want to get in that stuff with her. I better stand down here with these smiley people. Oh, some of them went away. <sighs> I lost some of my smiley faces. Dang. <laughs> okay, let's go for the uh, spirit of compromise. Yes, that's where we were. And those meanies that made us do it. No, only kidding. <sighs> okay, oh dear. What if I'm mad about it? What if I want to kick their dang teeth in? Oh, no, I can't do that. I'm a Christian, Mr. Bill. <laughs> Got myself into a frenzy. My mustache is sweating. <laughs> I mean, that's really bad. That's real intense anxiety when your mustache is sweating. I actually have an entire sermon on sweating. You know, it's very not Spiritual to sweat. Sometimes you have to like do it. I think I'm in the flesh. <laughs> I think I dropped out of the spirit. <laughs> I was, man. Well, anyway, I don't want to go there. I have a whole little speech on it. No, we don't have time for it. We have to be serious. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. We got to get rid of it. I'm hurting her. Okay. All right. Compromise. Taking back our agreement. Ooh -hoo. Whoa, okay. You have to have agreement to give agreement. Duh. So if I've given away my rights to certain areas of myself, I can no longer give them to God because I don't have them. 
painful. It's like it goes in with the teaching, which is uh, you have to have a life to give a life to God. <laughs> If you're busy being a victim and a martyr, you need to get your life back first. Then you can offer God something. A lot of us come to the Lord and we're such victims. Uh, we can't give ourselves to God. We keep coming to the cross and surrendering. But you heard about that little sacrifice that keeps crawling off. Well, you know why it crawls off? Because it feels so dang bad about itself. So sometimes, you know, we actually have to enter into a certain amount of healing and redemption before we can die well. That makes sense, though. You know, how many people beat, would beat yourself up because you weren't willing, you just didn't, you kept not wanting to die? You just say, oh, Lord, Lord, I give you everything, give you everything, and as soon as the Lord turns his back, you take it all back. Well, part of it, just to give us a break, is because we've had so much shame and so much low self-esteem, we cannot go any farther in spiritual death until we get our resurrection and then we can come and actually move into the appropriate and surrendered life to the Lord in the right spirit and actually do it. But before we couldn't. But it, wasn't, it really wasn't because we didn't want to. It was really because of a lot of woundedness, okay? So doesn't that help? All righty then. So we have to uh, ask the Lord for clarity here. Um, so let's just say we're sorry, okay? So... Uh, Lord, we just want to say that we are sorry because we gave away our agreement with things we didn't really agree with. Ooh, wow. Well, I'm just going to pause here. Did you see that? Fi that also tracked into the fear of being punished or rejected. I was afraid that I would be rejected. Wow, or not pleasing to God if I did not agree with things I did not fully understand or believe. Wow. Mm, wow. Lord, I forgive people that required agreement from me. Mm, before I was ready to give it. Mm -hmm. Woo. Uh, I forgive the people that put timelines on my relationship with Jesus. Mm, whoa. Woo, you feel that? That really hurts. And, and made me do things or say things. To prove my love and obedience for God. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. Uh, Father, uh, let's see, that was forgive. Uh, so I receive your forgiveness and I forgive myself. And I ask that you will also forgive the people who led me astray. Accidentally or intentionally. Wow. Ooh. Now hold on. Let's just wait and see where we should go next. Okay. Uh, let me see how to frame this prayer. Um, I'm going to say it to you first and then we'll pray it just so you have it and see if you like it. Uh, what we're going to do is we want to break. We ask the Lord. We're going to ask the Lord to break now. All uh, words and oaths and prayers of unholy agreement. How's that sound? Good? Okay, let's do that. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask that you will now break and sever and destroy all, hold on, bondages formed through the prayers of un uh, prayers through the prayers oaths or agreements that formed unholy agreements oh gosh Woo. and now uh, we ask that you will sever all unsanctified 
and ungodly soul ties. Wow, to any people, places, things, or rituals. Woo, whoa, a lot on rituals. That goes with our religiosity, okay? Woo, wow. And we receive back the rights to our own words. Wow, and we receive back the power of agreement. <laughs> Wow, that our yea might be yea and our nay, nay. Wow, and, that's, and I just release, let's re we receive the cleansing power of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, cleansing us from all defilements, spirit, soul, and body. Amen. Hey, guys, that felt good, didn't it? Ooh. Do you like this? Is it fun? Are you having fun? Yeah. yeah. It, I, I like it. It's kind of like this little let's go on a trip with God, but you don't know where you're going, but whatever. It's kind of fun. We're, we're practicing following the Spirit. We're walking in the inspired realm. We're, we're being transformed by the uh, processes that He has for us in this particular gathering. Isn't that great? Okay, um, now we uh, we're talking about alignment, spirit, soul, and body, remember, and that, that our spirits, so we did all this work, you see, and we were getting freed from fear of deception and the right to not have to agree when I didn't agree. But you know what, when I got get that right back, do you know what it actually causes me to have? I can have an openness in my spirit and I don't have to clench my uttermost parts, right? Because I have received back my rights. See? See, once I'd lost my rights, I was in a victim stance, wasn't I? So when, I get, when you give somebody something that you don't want to give them, you actually move into a victim posture, don't you? And then once you feel like you're in a victim place, anybody that comes to you that you're not sure, you're, you're like this. You're in fear, and you're in a very closed and self-protective posture, aren't you? And that makes a lot of sense. Once I, in counseling, I think they call it taking your power back, don't they? <clears throat> once I get my agreement back and go, okay, I, don't, I, don't, I no longer agree, have to agree with what I don't agree with. I've actually taken my power back. I actually can choose what I, what I like and don't like, what I believe and what I don't believe. Therefore, I can listen to, you can listen to me and not go, eh, what if she does something really weird? Um, you know, then you maintain a being, you know, the word, it's like auspicious with a sus, suspicious. Okay, this being suspicious is not an open posture, is it? Okay, but once I feel that I don't have to do what somebody wants me to do if I don't want to do it, then I'm not suspicious. I don't care. I've got, my, I've got power back, don't I? Feels good, doesn't it? Feels powerful. Okay, um, so that we were, ran into that, okay? Now let's see, where, where do we want to go? Um, we have the spirit, the soul, and the body. We want to do alignment. Um, <sighs> Is that amazing? Well, that was a supernatural moment. Who could coordinate their tongue that way? <laughs> Certainly not I. You notice I can't even say suspicious, let alone do that amazing little whatever it was. <laughs> and I certainly could never do it again. Oh, what an incredible moment. Is that on a tape or something? I could like reproduce it for myself. Oh, I'm so vain. I think it's about me. <laughs> Is that Carly Simon? <laughs> I'm dating myself. Anybody old enough to remember Carly Simon? Yeah, oh, good, good, good. I feel good. Y'all weren't born yet. I, I know. Yeah, don't even say it. You're like, now you know what they say to me? Oh, yeah, my parents weren't even born then. That's so annoying. <laughs> my parents weren't even born when your music was playing. I'm telling you. Anyway, <sighs> I'm just getting a little refreshment here. I have to entertain myself. 
I do it after every tragic event. Okay, okay, ha, okay, good, hmm, ha. Yeah, intercession, take sound, movement, right? Color, whatever. Remember, I can always be ridiculous and blame it on the Lord. Sometimes it works, but people with discernment know better. Like, what kind of flesh is that? Oh, it's me. Okay, we're going to go on, but it's going to take energy. That's how come I'm giving us a little breather. We're going to go on to do alignment, but alignment's going to be deep. So, uh, okay, hold on. I'm just having to stretch here. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Hey, do you know, like, you know when I, I'm up here? With my husband, you know what that is? It's prophetic intercession. You know what it is? I, I figured it out. Well, the Holy Spirit told, said, people go, what are you doing? And I go, I don't know. <laughs> what do you think I'm doing? I had a man come say, you know, I seen you at a conference. I hated it. I, 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 I bought the video, and I took it home, and I hated it for five years every time I watched it. I'm like, mister, put yourself out of your misery. Get another DVD. And then he went, but you know, after five years of hating it, God touched me, and I'm here to say I'm sorry, sister. <laughs> oh, my gosh. What a masochist. Can you imagine putting yourself through that torture of watching something that just makes you sweat with anger and religious frenzy? Praise the Lord he loved that guy enough to, you know, set him free so he didn't have to torture himself with that same DVD for another five years. But aren't we just that way? Oh, man. Oh, I just love to sit and look at something and go, that annoys me so much. Shut it off. Shut it off if it bothers you. Look the other way. Hey, give it a break. <laughs> oh, we could do my whole thing on judgment and criticism. Oh, no, we don't have time for that. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, I have to do my own personal repentance. Do you know how long my, like, thing is? My, I, I mean, you know, like, I can't see, I can't get up here and do for you what I can't, I'm not doing for me. It's, I have to just tell you, if I'm not in the mood to get out my own personal laundry, what the heck is going to happen? Nothing. Nothing. Nothing good can happen if I'm not willing to be the sacrifice. See, I'm, not, I'm, up, here, I'm up here with, I have to practice identification. So I don't, I'm not here talking to you. <laughs> I'm you. I'm you. I'm every single one of you. And then everything that we do, I have to do it with you, too. And so that's the only place that my intercession has any power, is if I'm willing to be the very thing I'm praying about, which isn't really hard <laughs> because of who I am. So, yeah, I mean, everything that I get, I've either done it, thought it, been it, or I have the capacity to do it. Every kind of pride and wickedness. That's identification. That's why most people don't want to be operating in priestly intercession, do they? Who wants to identify with it and have to face the pain and the reality of your own sinful condition? But as you do, you're only, not only are you cleansed, but the uh, people that you're praying for and with are transformed, and you're doing the work of Jesus Christ. That's pretty great, isn't it? Okay. Um, spirit, soul, and body... Uh, like this Arthur Burke guy, he, he talks about the alignment and he prays, you know, spirit, spirit, he calls the spirit to attention. Now, you know, our spirits, they actually, depends on you, the person, but you will feel if uh, we address the spirit, you can actually feel your spirit uh, quicken in your body. It's a lot depends on the sense of the, the, I think it depends on the hydration of your spirit. 
I've noticed in the times that I've been ministering to people, and you'll, you've probably noticed it, when people are really, really, really dried out, you'll notice that, the, that it takes a lot of juice from the anointing to bring a quickening in the person who's receiving it because they are so dehydrated. And then you'll notice people that are very spiritually hydrated, you don't have to hardly do anything, and their spirit is, is very lively and quickened. That, my theory, it has to do with hydration. When people are very uh, burned out, tired out, spiritually drained, they've let their own spiritual batteries get really, really low. The people like that are very hard to minister to because you, they have to t you have to give so much of your own vitality to bring any life to them. And, uh, um, of course, you know, there are like this really big supernatural zappos from the Lord when he's like, Pah! But if you're really ministering into anything that's deep in the person, if they're very dehydrated, uh, it'll, it can be very hard for them to receive. And you can really feel like, man, this is the deadest prayer I ever prayed in my entire life. A lot of that has to do not necessarily with their unbelief. It has to do with the lack of spiritual hydration in the person you're ministering to. So you have to, it's not like you want to, um, you know, withhold anything, but wisdom also tells you, pay attention to the Holy Spirit, because I don't know about you guys, but in personal, in, when you do personal ministry, a lot of times you have this great desire for the people to see and receive, to receive life, and you will give them a lot of juice out of you. And you've got to watch that because you do two or three people like that, you're gonna, you can kill yourself. You could like, well, where is my cemetery plot? I hope it's near the church. <laughs> As I've just about made myself dead. <laughs> Not the good kind of dead. So that's just a little two cent uh, commercial for me because I only can tell you that because I've done it a million times. And then you have to go home and you're like in the bed for a whole week. Oh, you know, and then see when you do that is when you've opened the door, you're much li more liable to uh, spiritual attacks and to spiritual warfare. And so we just want to use wisdom. And, and um, uh, so many times I haven't used wisdom. And I just wanted to share that little nugget with you. Okay. Um, back to the spirit. Arthur does alignment, spirit, soul, and body. But you know, being the uh, unique individual that I am, I had to just add my own little something that I got from the Lord. So I added my own little something. So his was alignment, spirit, soul, and body. But I thought, hey, since you got the align, because I love spiritual chiropractic, I thought, well, why don't we just connect up with God? So we have, I call it, well, I didn't make it up. He made it up. When you get yourself, your triune self in agreement, I, I call it triunity. Is that the cutest? It's like a little personal community. We're in triunity. Okay, so you got triunity. And then you got triunity with the Godhead. Is that awesome? And so I thought, well, we're here. We got our spirit out. Like, let's just connect our spirit up. So I began to connect, pray the prayer to connect the person's spirit to the Holy Spirit, then to Jesus, and then to the Father. That was pretty fun. Okay, then I went to the next stage. Next stage was, oh, since we're talking about the Holy Spirit and we're hooking somebody's spirit up with the Holy Spirit, let's go ahead since he's right there and you're concentrating on it, let's just ask the Holy Spirit to open up the gifts and the fruit. So we did that, and that was really good. I noticed that when I did it with people, that uh, because it's a spirit, spirit, you're in a spirit, spirit uh, prayer connection, the, uh, the, the opening up of the awareness of the fruit and the gifts was really awesome. Well, this Arthur Birth guy, he talks about the seven redemptive gifts. Now, remember, as charismatics, we're into manifestation gifts. And redemptive gifts, we're not so into those. So they're from Romans 12, and that is the, pro what is it, prophet, servant, uh, teacher, exhorter, giver. Uh, oh, servant, I forgot servant. Prophet, servant, teacher, exhorter, giver, ruler, mercy. That's how they, say. okay, thank you all. I'm a servant, but I left me out. Okay. Anyway, so you have, oh, hey, you got, the, oh, okay, they're, hey, let's just go ahead and open up the redemptive gifts while we're here. So we pray and quicken them. And so those were the little, little steps that I did. So that's what I do in the, my little prayer that I call divine alignment. And then I, and I actually do, then that's what I kind of, like my little kind of get dressed for the day prayer for myself. Okay, so I'm going to do it for you because you all are so cutie cute. Okay, 
Alrighty, so I'm going to call your spirit to attention. And when I do, oh, yes, the more hydrated people may quicken. Were you asking me a question or just, okay, just curious. Okay. Oh, oh it did it by itself. Okay. I'm just, I just want to not be rude. Okay. I do it myself. But I want to say something. But then by the time somebody said, calls me, I forgot it. Um, anyway. <laughs> oh, hold on. Oh, let's, let's let a wave. Good. Okay. You might feel it if you're not too dehydrated. If you're a feely person, you'll feel it. Um, it's nothing wrong. You might feel it shift. I am not doing anything weird uh, by calling your spirit, your so spirit, your soul, and your body. They're kind of facets, and we know about the mind-body connection and all that. So we know I'm not, um, you know, there's a thing called, you might not have heard of it, dualism. It's not to be confused with the trucks with the extra tires. Those are dualies. Um, th this is dualism. And dualism is this, you know, teaching. I don't know if it's related to Gnosticism. Gnosticism with a G. Uh, Gnosticism, you know, that's kind of the thing, like, be a spirit. Only spirit is good. Everything that's created is bad. That was kind of like the little vague teaching that your soul is bad, so kill the thing and, and soul. And if the best thing that you can do is just be a spirit. But if it was such a good thing, just be a spirit, then how come Jesus came in a body? So that means the body's not bad, okay? So that's kind of Gnostic heresy. Um, anyway, so I'm not, it's not about Gnosticism as I speak to the three different parts. I'm not saying that they're separate. I just want to honor the facetness of Eunice, okay? It's just like when I talk about the Holy Spirit and Jesus and the Father, I'm not separating them. I'm simply talking about a facet of the same Godhead. Isn't that lovely? Okie dokie, are you ready? Oh, are you exhausted after my introduction? I bless you, lovely, cute people. Okie dokie, I'm going to start having more fun again. Okay, oh, time's running out, and this takes me two hours normally. Oh, no, only kidding. <laughs> okay, okay, um, so pay attention. Okay, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. No, 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 no. You just relax and receive and quicken. <laughs> and I'll do it to you. So sorry. Okay, so in the name of Jesus, I want to call your spirits to attention. And I, ooh, good. I call your spirit man to attention. And I invite your spirit man to come to the front. Good. There you go. Wow. Whoo, good. Wow. And I bless and I honor you spirits. Wow. You guys are amazing. You are so beautiful. Man, some of you guys are so shiny and lovely. <gasps> luminous. The Lord calls you luminous and lovely. Wow, totally unique. There's never been another you. Wow. Oh, full of virtue. Full of virtue and truth. Mm. And I just release now a sprinkling of living water onto you, Spirit. Some of you are a little tired. Some are a little dehydrated. And some of you have been in dusty places. So I just release the hydration mm, woo, of the Holy Spirit. Wow. Wow. Just the most beautiful living water just sprinkling over you, over each one of you, just the way you like it. Some are really, really gentle. Some are a little bit spritzy and carbonated. But each of you spirits is getting a beautiful spritz just the way that feels good to you. Yes, cutie cute. I love you. He wants to kiss you. <laughs> 
I know, those birds are so kissy sometimes. Woo, hold on, we're, whoa. Come on, you guys are floaty guys. I just bless all you floaty ones. Woo, there you go, wow, wow. Keep, some people need to come a little bit more to the front because it's not that scary, is it? Yeah, good. I just bless your spirits. I bless your spirits with truth. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, kindness. Yeah, I feel the kindness of the Lord just touching your spirit. Mm-hmm. Woo, beautiful is that. How beautiful is that? Just keep, yeah, just keep letting him quicken you, quicken you. Mm -hmm. I just want to lift off of anybody that might have it. It'll come off any generational burdens that are created any heaviness on your spirit. Yeah, good. There they come. There they come. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, those are coming right off. Wowee. Generational grief is coming off of some of you. Yeah, you've had grief and it wasn't even you. It never was you. And you carried it forever and ever. But it's just in the bloodline and it's coming. Woo, there it goes. Flying right off. Wow, flying right off. Super. Woo, hold on, hold on. Woo, some of you are stretching out. Your spirits are stretching out. It's like they were really in a cramped little place, and your spirits are just stretching out now, like they're getting wings. Whoa, whoo, wow, they're growing. Woo, some wings are just expanding. Whoa, stretch. Awesome. <laughs> Just stay there, spirits, and I'm going to call the souls to attention. So I call everybody's soul to attention. Woo, good. There you go. And I bless you as you come to the front. Yeah, there you are. Don't be afraid. Some are a little shy. Don't be afraid. Yeah, like, yeah, I heard that before. <laughs> no, we're not going to do anything bad to you, soul. We're going to give you some free choices here. And we're going to put you in a new place if you'd like to go there, in a new position where you will get all of your needs met. Yeah, some of you souls are very, very tired and worn out. Wow, some of your souls have been in the front and been very hit by a lot of hard life. Yeah, and you need to come in under spirit so that wonderful hydration can just fill your soul and cause all the myriad beauty of your soul to come forth. 
Hold on. Mm. Now, some of your souls are a little bit dull. And I feel like uh, life's hardships have dulled the senses of your soul and dulled uh, almost like the capacity of your soul for life. So I'm going to lift off of you, soul, all dullness, all heaviness, all weariness, all loss of play, all loss of play. Loss of play is being removed. Childlikeness is coming back into the soul realm. Whoa, there it is. There it is. Wow. Wow. For some of you, there's extreme creative release in, ch in play playfulness. We've got playfulness coming back into the soul realm. Wow. Creative ideas, inventions. Oh, my. Recipes. Recipes. Recipes are formulas. New formulas are coming on board in your soul. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. There's rearranging going on in your souls. That's tremendous. Tremendous rearranging of your souls. It's wonderful. Wonderful. Wow. Wow, illumination is coming to your souls. How great is that? How great is that? The light-bearing capacity of your souls is increasing. Whoa, there it is. Woo, beautiful, awesome. Now, souls, I'm going to invite you, and you can choose. Um, some souls like to go underneath the spirit covering. And some souls like to be behind. So you can choose whichever is comfortable for you. Okay, so either way, I invite you to come in under your spirit or behind your spirit, whichever you like, and just come in and just slip in to your perfect position. Very nice. You're all clicking in. Clickety, 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 clickety. Click, 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 click. Wonderful. Okay, now let's pray, play, inter, pray interfacing. So there's going to be divine hooking up, little hookups that were designed woo, at the beginning of time in God's creation. Little hookings up for communication between spirit and soul as so, soul's in the right place. Whoa, you feel that burning? Woo. Ooh, burning is hot or some some stuff is really hooking up and reconnecting yeah oh this is getting rid of a lot of self-rejection self-alienation separation within uh, yourself mm-hmm any antagonism within the self Woo. any enmity within the self is leaving that's beautiful as this connecting up is happening now, while you're continuing to interface between spirit and soul, I want to call your bodies to attention. So I call your bodies to attention in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and I invite you, body, to come to the front. Good. Whoa. Thank you so much for responding. Oh, man. Whoa. Hold on. And we're just going to see how I'm going to have a little look at bodies and um, I don't know, I just want to speak to the liver in general. I want to speak to any, any livers that want to uh, be quickened right now. Okay, there's several livers and I, I address you. Um, yeah, you need a little quickening. Good, so we're going to release quickening to the liver. And there's just a little bit for a uh, couple of you livers. There's a miscommunication problem happening. So I want to, ooh, you feel that? Yeah. Okay, I want to lift off all miscommunication that is within the liver. Now, some of this miscommunication is spiritual. Some's emotional. Yeah, ooh, good. Okay, so I'm going to lift off emotion that's settled into the liver. Ooh, man, mm, feel that? Shoo. Oh, hold on. Just, um, I lift off grief 
and sorrow and sadness. I lift off all hardness of heart that actually is manifesting in the liver. And so I lift, we lift all of that off of the liver. Good, beautiful. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, hold on. You guys are doing so great. You're doing so great. Now, there's a little chemical imbalance. I don't really know that much biology. I know the gallbladder's friends with the liver and the pancreas is in there too, isn't it? Yeah. Let's just speak to that triune positioning of pancreas, gallbladder, and liver. Do you feel that, kids? And I speak to the com inner community of the liver, gallbladder. Hold on, right there it is. Any blockages? <clears throat> I'm just going to lift unforgiveness out of the any ducts that are connecting between the gallbladder and the liver in there. Little, little ducts and some little tubes. And there's a little unforgiveness in there. Ooh. And so we release, oh gosh, we release that unforgiveness out of the tubing so that <clears throat> life and virtue can flow. There you go. Hold on. And let's, we have to in, invite pancreas into the combo. So, okay, pancreas, hold on. Good, just wait a minute and, whoo, oh, whoa, hold on. Oh, man, I don't know. Oh. Let's take sorrow, tribulation, and torment off of some pancreases, okay? Yeah, we'll just, oh, man, oh, man. We just lift. Yeah, we lift that off of you, pancreas. Good, hold on, and let's ask the circuit. Let's ask the uh, circulatory system to just release a little extra blood flow into that that threefold area now. So we're going to ask for blood circulation to begin to increase. Good, and just let's get. Hold on, we're not going to increase blood pressure. We're just going to increase a little bit more flow. Let's have a little bit of a surge. And we're getting, hold on, we're going to have a little countdown for the surge, okay? So we're going to wait, 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 and surge. Whoa. Awesome. That's really good. Now, some people are really experiencing this, and some people, this isn't for their bodies. But it's nice your bodies are being very supportive. It's very, very precious. Some of your bodies are just, it's like a form I've never quite thought of it before, but those who are listening, your bodies are listening, and your bodies are in a supportive agreement position for this work that God is doing for other bodies. Isn't that precious? Whoever thought of our bodies um, caring about the bodies of one another in the same way. It's very beautiful. And our bodies are honoring the processes going on with other people's bodies. So thank you for that. Hold on, it's still, still working in the, in the gut. Um, I just want to speak to anybody's uh, bladder. We just want to call bladders to attention. Yeah, ooh, okay, mm, ooh, gosh. And we just want to lift off any uh, dis-ease of the bladder, any inflammation, or any, um, it's not as much of, a, of an infection as it is uh, just cells that don't really need to be there. And so let's just ask the bladder to uh, contract, to contract, and then appropriately, don't want any wetting of our pants here, uh, just bladders, just to appropriately allow, re bring a tissue release now. And let's kind of, we're going to release the anointing into those bladders just to go around within the bladder. Whoo, good. And get all that cellular debris off the internal wall of the bladder. Good grief. That's excellent. Oh, gosh. And now um, hold on and... Good, there's an absorption. 
happening in our bodies and hold on. Whew. Yeah, this is so great, guys. And then we're holding and then we're going to feel a release. Good, very good. So kidneys, you look really good and I don't see any problem with adrenals in here today. Um, Oh, hold on. Okay, let's pick it up in the lymphatic system, okay? So I'm just going to call the lymphatic system to attention. And I bless you, lymphatic systems. And I just ask now for, um, for some, you know, we need a little lymphatic drain. Not everybody can get lymphatic massages. So we're going to ask the Spirit of God to just... Give a little squeeze on those lymph nodes throughout the entire body. And so we just uh, hold on. We're waiting, and we're going to release, and you're going to feel a, re a little surge in different areas of your body as the lymph glands release. So we're going to wait, 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 and there's your drain. Good. Excellent. Awesome. Keep going. Keep going. Good. Woo. Oh, man. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Very good. Woo. Very nice. Lymph glands, you did great. Now, let me say, I don't really see hearts look good. I don't see wonderful hearts. And um, stomachs are doing good. And yeah, let's go to the endocrine system. I love the endocrine system. Okay, now endocrine systems, I want to speak to you and I want to honor all of your different glands, the pituitary and the thymus and the parathyroid and the thyroid. And is there any, and there's some more of those in the endocrine system? Uh, I can't think of them all, but the adrenals are part, is thymus, is the spleen part of the, no? Oh, we left the spleen out, darn. Hormones, all the hormones. Okay, so every kind of, uh, good, oh, good, I like that. Ooh, we're going to talk to chemistry now, good. Cause, whoa, there, because we have endocrine is uh, chemistry, but also uh, that also, all those other little hormones uh, also affect uh, uh, brain chemistry. So we're going to hit the brain chemistry as well as the rest of the chemistry, right? So I'm going to call uh, all the endocrine system and all of the different uh, brain chemistries, and I call them all to attention now, and I begin to uh, call you into alignment. Now, this is what we're going to do. We're going to get ask the Holy Spirit now to engage original balance, God-ordained uh, balance on all hormones and all blood chemistry and all brain chemistry and we're going to have that download into the sp your human spirit very nice and then we're going to uh, good we're going to call it into alignment now so in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ I call every type of chemistry blood uh, brain and endocrine all chemicals we call it in to God ordained alignment and we release homeostasis now. Okay, hold on. Now some of you are actually feeling, you might feel something in your brain re, uh, reversing. There's some actual reversal of, uh, of uh, the way of function and that's good because some of it's not been right. Very good. Now that's going to just keep on working. And uh, that was the body. So bodies, as you keep on working, the whole, your personal spirits are, have the data that's necessary to keep on working with your personal processes. So this will keep on working within your body as we go along. So even into tonight, you're going to be feeling it. So it's a good thing. All righty, bodies, I just invite you now to come in either under spirit and soul or behind, whichever is your alignment of preference and for you to click in and come into your alignment and interface. Good. 
Now, if we come back to spirit, and I want to call to attention, first of all, the seven redemptive gifts in each person. So I call the prophet portion of your human spirit to attention in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Wow, you'll feel different. Woo, ones will quicken and who have that particular prophet uh, redemptive gift. Good, and that's about alignment. It's a little bit similar to the prof regular prophet gift, but a little bit different. And so we call that prophet portion to attention. We bless their prophet portion. We lift off any shame or woundedness off of the prophet portions of your spirit in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now I call your servant portion to attention in the name of Jesus and ask your uh, spirit, uh, your servant portion to just quicken now and interface with Holy Spirit. Very nice. Your servant portion is a lot about cleansing, the process of, of, of uh, operating cleansing and re redemptive process. And so I bless, I release the cleansing of the blood of Jesus over those servant gifts who's been rode hard and put up wet. Uh, any place of burnout that's happening in the, re in the redemptive gift of servant, um, I release he health and healing, vitality and virtue to the servant gift in the human spirit. Now I'm going to call to attention the teacher gift and uh, ask, whoo, good, for the quickening on the teacher gift uh, of your human spirit. Very good. Whoo, you're going to feel... Uh, though, ooh, some people who that's your main, more main or gift, you're going to feel a divine activation on that. Again, uh, shame and false beliefs and lies I lift off of all servant gifts. Uh, excuse me, all teacher gifts in the name of Jesus. Really good, very good, good line because there's lining up with truth and uh, right doctrine, cleansing of uh, illegal. Um, beliefs uh, out in Jesus name very nice Woo! let's go on uh, from teacher let's go I call exhorter to attention in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and I bless the exhorter gift in Jesus name uh, good you people lover you love people um, mm, yes but I lift off of you that any place of fear of man or man pleasing which is the downside for exhorter and I lift that off of you any particular wounding in exhorter that has shut you down from your gift you're good with evangelism and you're uh, good with gathering so I bless you exhorters in the name of Jesus now I'm going to call to attention the redemptive gift of giver givers I call you to attention in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and I bless you today Woo, good. Let's activate givers. Givers love to have uh, family activities to gather the body of Christ. Uh, it's a, where the gift the networking comes out of. And so I just bless you're putting the, the, the giver gift that brings things together and has the gift of assembling. And even this woohoo assembly within the facets of your own spirit, good coordinator. So I bless you exhorter in the name of Jesus now let's I want to call to attention now where we should be at ruler ruler I call you to attention in the name of Jesus and you are our good administrator and organizer I bless you ruler go ruler excellent we just came out of the ruler season we're in the mercy season but ruler you are still a fabulous facet of the human spirit and I bless you with a whole new way of functioning you are you're not held in by the restrictions of such tight delineation as in the previous spiritual season but you're into uh, just less work and more uh, stuff coming out of it. Amen to that. But we just honor you, R ruler gift today, in the name of Jesus. Now we're going to mercy gift. I call you mercy uh, aspect of the spirit to attention, and I bless you, mercy. Mercy, you just, uh, just know how to access the presence, and you are the part that just easily goes into the presence of God. And so I bless your mercy gift today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I just call any mercies that are not facing straight, who are a little off tilt or a little off access, I call you into a plumb line, uh, a plumb line with your intimacy, that there will be no twists 
or distortions on the intimacy of the mercy gift in the mercy season so that I bless all of the seven facets of your human spirit. Now, spirits, you're doing awesome, and I want you now to just become aware of the Holy Spirit, not that you haven't been. And what we're going to do is, obviously, the Holy Spirit and Jesus and the Father are already in us, but what I'm going to do is I just want us to, I'm going to pray a prayer that makes us more aware of the presence, more conscious of the indwelling Holy Spirit, okay? So I'm just going to ask your, you guys, your spirits, to just open up to kind of, I call it dilate, just to dilate a little bit. And we're going to ask the Holy Spirit just to release a more perception of his presence as he f infills your human spirit in an entirely new dimension. And so just allow the Holy Spirit to fill you and for you to become more conscious of his presence in your spirit as he opens up within your spirit his love and joy and peace, his kindness, patience, and goodness, his faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And also he releases within you the word of wisdom and the word of knowledge, discernment of spirits, faith, healings, and miracles, tongues, interpretation of tongues, and prophecy, as well as the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of knowledge, and the spirit of understanding and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of the Lord, and I made up a few of my own things. Um, I ask for him to release within you the spirit of what I call times and seasons, the sons of Ishkar anointing, that your spirit would know through your contact with him in that divine way, the times and seasons of the spirit, as well as the spirit of prophecy, which is the living word living in you, the testimony Jesus testifying through his life in you. Now the Holy Spirit within you, of course, who is the way that you access the awareness to the indwelling Christ. So we're going to ask Jesus just to make himself more clearly perceivable in your human spirit. Yeah, there, I feel it now. And so, Jesus, we just invite you to make us aware of your presence, the presence of Jesus within our human spirit. And we just sense a new awareness of the indwelling Christ within our human spirits now. As we become, yeah, there he is. There's the Lamb of God. And as we, this is how we enter in as we become aware of Christ within. And it's what the mystics, or not so mystics, called union with Christ. Now, Jesus within has, uh, is like Jesus without, that he came to reveal the Father. And so we just want to become aware of the presence of Father within our human spirits. So we just ask the Father now, oh, good, to come in through the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ and make us aware of the indwelling Father. And so we welcome the awareness, there it is, beautiful, of the indwelling Father of Fathers the Father of light, good, with all his grace and mercy, yes. And so now we have the Father, occupying our human spirit through the Lord Jesus Christ, who's occupying our spirits through the eternal Holy Spirit. And so we now receive the fullness of the Godhead living and dwelling in each of us, in our spirits, in our souls, in our bodies. And so I just bless you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ today with divine alignment. Amen. Very peaceful, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Well, 
I think we can go, don't you think? I mean, we can stay or go, but I think we're done. Thank you. It was fun. And I'll see y'all later. Do we turn them off? Yeah.